Harry took to his bed and consoled himself with food, and so he got quite fat. Meanwhile, John got charged with minor parking offences and aggravated rape. So Harry helped him out, but it all went pear-shaped again, like it does. Our client has been treated outrageously, lawyers for Harry Johnson told reporters in Lionel Town, Jamaica, shortly after his release from jail. Mr Johnson was published for the frailty of his wind valves and will now be seeking exemplary damages against the Attorney General and Resident Magistrate, Norma McIntosh. Earlier the lawyers had explained the circumstances surrounding the incident, which took place late last year. Our client had only gone to the Lionel Town Court Horse to accompany his cousin John, who was charged with mine parking offences and aggravated rape. A fisherman by trade, known to his friends as Fat Gutty, Johnson suffers from a digestive ailment and, unwisely perhaps, had gorged on pickles before setting off. He had already been thrown off a bus for excessive flatulence but it was during the hearing that his gastric difficulties became severe, forcing him to belch very loudly and repeatedly from the public gallery. While Magistrate McIntosh was warning him not to disturb proceedings again, he was unable to prevent a real rasper from coming out, and she interpreted this last eructation as contempt of court. My client is able to belch while speaking, and in anger he then rasped an insulting epithet at the judge. She objected to being called a stinking shitty shitty face. A stinking shitty shitty face. A stinking shitty shitty face. And sentenced my client to a fortnight's jail. Call that justice? When Harry got out, his mum wouldn't even let him stay in the garage. He burst into tears. So she said, OK, if he really hasn't got anywhere to go, he can stay in the shed at the bottom of the garden. He moved his stuff from the garage. The shed was smaller and colder but at least there wasn't the traffic noise, so it was better than nothing. At least it was summer, so as long as he wrapped up at night, it wasn't too bad. It was nice and hot during the day, and Mum still let him use the bathroom twice a week. It was after one of his twice weekly sessions in the bathroom that he was sitting in the garden, drying off, and enjoying the sun. It was the hot bath that did it, he told a local reporter, as members of Eastbourne Fire Brigade struggled to free him. Hot water's always made my apricot sag, and that's where the problem started. Johnson, a resident of Old Orchard Road, Eastbourne, explained what had happened to him that morning. I'd just got out of the bath, and thought I'd sun myself on the patio before I got dressed. I sat down on a chair with the Daily Express, but my ball's sack was loose because of the hot water, and my tessies slipped between the slats of the seat. I didn't pay any heed at first, but when I tried to stand, the skin had tightened up again, and I couldn't get them out. Realising I was stuck, I scuttled back into the house, on the chair, and phoned the fire brigade. They were here for over an hour. They tried greasing me and all sorts, but it was no good. So they hacked the chair to pieces, which is a pity, because it's one of a set I bought from Timothy White's, and you can't get them any more. It's cold hours for me from now on. Excited by his success, Harry entered another competition. Mr Johnson has no one to blame but himself. This accident would never have happened if he had not drunk 15 bottles of hydrogen beer in order to maximise the size of the flames he could belch during the contest. And the Beer Corporation stand accused by Harry Johnson of selling toxic substances and are being sued for causing grievous bodily harm. A Suiso band of beer is a big hit with customers. The carbon dioxide normally used to add fizz has been replaced by environmentally friendly hydrogen gas. It's very popular in karaoke bars because the hydrogen gas is lighter than air and gives the drinker an unnaturally high soprano type voice, like a geisha. The gas is also flammable and some singers hold cigarette lighters near their mouths so they can belch in between verses and shoot blue flames across the bar. It's what we in Japan call performing the warbling dragon. Performing the warbling dragon. It's a very beautiful effect in a darkened room. Our flaming karaoke contest simply combined these popular trends. Unfortunately, Mr Johnson became drunk and disorderly during the early stages of the contest with disastrous results. True, he catapulted balls of fire across the room that Gajira would be proud of, but this was not enough to win him first prize 
because the judgment is made on the quality of the flames and that of the singing, and after fifteen bottles of lager he was badly out tune. Sadly he took exception to the result, became abusive, and began belching blue fireballs at the judge. He set alight Mrs. Mifuni's hair, and entirely removed her eyebrows, lashes, and paper earring in the process. He also scorched the clothing of two nearby customers, neither of whom has ever returned to my bar again. My security guards were left with no choice but to hurl themselves at Mr. Johnson's knees, knocking his legs from under him and causing him to swallow a lighted cigarette. The Tiki Taki bar takes no responsibility for the subsequent internal combustion and burns to Mr. Johnson's esophagus, larynx and sinuses as the burning hydrogen gases force their way out of his body and confirm there is no wiring around his body, television personality told the audience at a Taoist training centre in Hong Kong. No trickery, no sleight of hand. What you are about to witness is Qigong, a demonstration of pure penis power. Pure penis power. Pure penis power. Pure penis power. Johnson then introduced the audience. Johnson, a Taoist philosopher, martial arts expert and fortune cookie manufacturer, who told them, I have devoted my life to learning ancient Chinese techniques of regulating the body's energy, known as Qigong, and have mastered the art of lifting weights with my penis. I began lifting small weights when I was ten, but it was only in 1982, when I attained insight into universal energy, Tao, that I learned to concentrate it in my vital manhood and could attempt the feats you will witness today. After warming up by swinging 45 kilogram discs back and forth <laughs> with his genitalia, he moved his underwear for a final inspection. He then tied several red ropes to his penis and testicles, attached 159 kilograms of weights to the end, breathed deeply several times, and lifted the metal discs 12 centimetres off the ground for a period of 10 seconds. After a stunned silence, his audience respectfully left the hall. Speaking after the demonstration, I do not use chalk. My techniques are not only for weightlifting, I can also cure impotence, premature ejaculation and bedwetting. I have 25 disciples at present who also work at my cookie factory and they can all lift 13 kilograms with their private parts. We meet on Thursdays at 8pm in Temple Street. Admission is free. Then Harry fell in love and got married again and had kids. What is all this fuss? It is a beautiful name for a baby. Harry Johnson told reporters gathered outside the Tokyo family court. This country is ruled by fascists. I intend to appeal. He was speaking about the Akashima municipal government's objection to his choice of name for his son. The name, Little Flower Plucked from Hairy Bottom, came to me in a dream. So I went to the town hall to enter it in the family register. At first the official wrote it down but after consulting with a superior, he came back, crossed it out, and said that it was rude, and if I didn't choose a name that conformed to social norms, he'd call the police. He took his case to the Tokyo Family Court, who initially ruled in his favour. They said I'd abuse my naming rights, but since the name had been written in the register, it shouldn't have been crossed out again. When the municipal government still refused to register the name, I offered to change it to Akuma, Devil Child, instead, so as not to cause offence. But they threw me out of the building and appealed to the family court, who now say I have to call him something else. So that's what I'm going to call him, something else. That will teach them. I shall not be mocked. Luckily Harry's wife, Precious Summer, insisted on calling him Harry Johnson after his dad and their daughter, Alice Lucy Johnson, and they all lived happily ever after and Alice and Harry Jr. became magicians. Harry was recovering in the back garden. He didn't trust the chair after the balls incident, and now his bum was also very sore after the latest escapade with the light bulb. Still, at least he'd won the hundred dollars. Shame he had to pay eighty dollars of it to the doctor to take the light bulb out. Still, he was twenty dollars up for his efforts, so life's not that bad. So he was lying gingerly on the grass when something making a noise went flying overhead and landed in the next door neighbour's garden, the Murphys, an Irish family who had a lot of noisy drunken parties. Harry had been to one, but tried to chat up one of the Murphy daughters with his belch impressions. 
but he quickly got a beating off several of the Murphy brothers and cousins for his pains, and he was escorted off the premises forthwith, and with a good kick up the bum, as he went. So he was wary of them after that. The thing landed, and Harry looked on, bemused. He had heard what Brenda Murphy had just said to her daughter, and he was amazed. Wow! So God and Jesus really do exist, he thought, and he had something of a religious conversion. At the time it seemed like a miracle, Brenda Murphy told the vicar of St John with St Michael, Bournemouth. Two weeks ago I was having a picnic on the lawn, and my little daughter said she wanted a cat. I told her to ask Jesus for one, so she started to pray. Barely ten seconds later this pussy suddenly came hurtling through the air, screeching very loudly, and landed inside our wicker hamper. It stayed with us ever since. What was I to think? While reclaiming his cat, the vicar was able to offer a more prosaic explanation of events to astonished parishioners. Two weeks ago, Horace became stuck in a tree. I couldn't get him down, so I climbed up as far as I could, tied one end of a rope around the trunk, and the other to my car bumper. Then I drove slowly forward, bending the bow nearer the ground. Unfortunately, my foot slipped on the accelerator, the car shot forward, the rope broke, and Horace was catapulted into space and clean out of sight. There was no sign of him at all. If, it hadn't, if I hadn't seen Brenda buying cat food in Tesco's when I knew she didn't have a cat, Horace's whereabouts would still be a puzzle. The Lord moves in mysterious ways indeed. Praise him. Harry didn't know that Horace had been retrieved by his owner, the vicar. All he knew was that the sweet little girl had asked her mum for a cat, and she had said pray to Jesus, and then, lo and behold, there was a cat flying through the air, right over Harry's head, and neatly landing right in the picnic box. Harry decided that it must be a sign, a message to him from God. Or maybe he had special powers, and it was because he was there that the cat could suddenly appear like that. It had flown right over him, so he must be something to do with it. So he decided that maybe it was time to go to church, and ask the priest the meaning of it all. Shortly after adjusting his homemade water shoes, and stepping onto the surface of the Thames to walk via the Channel and the Seine to Paris, Harry Johnson was knocked down by his own safety boat, and rescued by the river police. Undeterred, he decided on another project. Since boyhood, it's been my ambition to fly, Harry told viewers of a Los Angeles cable TV station, but poor eyesight disqualified me from flying when I was in the Air Force. But after I was discharged, I had a bright idea, and thought of how to realise my dream. I went to the local Army-Navy surplus store, and bought 45 weather balloons and five tanks of helium, in my backyard, I strapped the balloons to my lawn chair and tied the chair to my jeep. Then I inflated the balloons and climbed into the chair for a test. It hovered just a few feet off the ground and everything seemed fine. So I went inside, took some sandwiches and a six-pack of Miller light and loaded my pellet gun. I figured I'd float up fifty feet or so, look around for an hour, and then, when I'd had enough, pop a few balloons and come gently back to earth. It didn't work out quite that way. When I cut the cord anchoring the chair to the jeep, the chair shot up at breakneck speed and levelled out at 11,000 feet. It was cold, and I didn't dare shoot the balloons in case that unbalanced me. I was scared, I admit it. Then, after 14 hours, things got worse, because apparently I drifted into the primary approach corridor of Los Angeles International Airport and showed up on their radar. Eventually, the emergency services sent up a helicopter to investigate, lowered me a rescue line, and hauled me up. The chair shot up the moment I was hauled out, and I never saw it again. Then, would you believe it, the moment I got back to Earth, the LAPD handcuffed me and charged me with violating LAX airspace. Why did I do it, they asked. Well, it's a hobby, isn't it?